Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are going to work on implementing uh, continuous integration into our app, which basically means that we'll run our test suite whenever we push the code to our repository or open a new pull request. Uh, this ensures that you know our new changes didn't break any of our existing tests. So let's get started. Let, let's create a new folder called .github. And inside of this folder, we can create a new directory called workflows. And this is a place where we can add anything that would run in GitHub Actions. So in our case, this would be our CI. So let's create something like, you know, tests, YAML, YAML, however that's called. And here we need to define a couple of things. So uh, we need to create a name. So for example, tests. Then we need to define when will it trigger. So maybe, uh, you know, we only want to do it on pull requests on certain branches. So we can do that. Maybe we are only interested for it to run on the main branch. So let's add main here. And now we need to define the jobs that would run. So we need to define the jobs. Here uh, we need to give it a name. And, you know, here we can again give our job name. So for example, run tests. And now there is a bunch of boilerplate that we need to um, that we need to add, but maybe let's start with something like you know runs on Ubuntu latest, and um, now let's list those steps. So this full repo will be uh, linked down below, and I will start with installing PHP. Then we need to copy our env file. Uh, so let's do name. Copy in the file. And here we can do something like cp env dot ci to dot env. We'll need to create that file. So let's not forget that. Maybe just uh, do cp env example env ci. So this will create a new file for us. And this one probably you know, should be added to repository so we can add it. So after the file is copied, we can probably run our composer. So let's just do run uh, composer install. And we can add no interaction to make sure that you know, there won't be any prompts that we have to answer. And at this point, we can also add the run test suite. And here we can simply do uh, run, come on, run PHP artisan tests. Oh, I, I forgot about an important step. Obviously, we also need to add the, the checkout. Uh, so this basically gives this action access to your repository. Uh, so then we install PHP, copy the env, run composer and run test suite. And that thing is caching composer uh, dependencies. And this is the really like the most bare bone example of this. So maybe let's uh, let's okay. So here's the thing. Let's also add push branches main. Now let's add it to our repo, uh, start of CI, and let's push that. Now let's switch to our GitHub and see what's going on. Okay, so if we go to our actions tab, we can see that our tests are running. So if we go here, we can see that running Composer, installed PHP, and then it failed at our test suite. And this is because we need application key. Um, so because this will run in, in CI, we can just do a key generate. And then we can just copy that key and paste it right here. So it's always there. Uh, so this should solve our issue. 
And now we should see, you know, now they're actually running. Here, what you can see is that it is kind of annoying that it keeps downloading those packages over and over again. And by the way, our test suite uh, runs successfully. Um, as we can see this green mark here. However, it's not the end yet. Uh, we, we have a couple of problems. So yeah, uh, one of those is that, you know, we keep installing the composer every time and, you know, it just takes time. In our case, it's like eight seconds per run, which is not the end of the world, but we can get it down. And the way you can do it is uh, we can cache the dependencies. If we go here, so yeah, now let's paste this bit of code. Uh, what it does is it basically caches our composer dependencies by caching the vendor folder. And, uh, you know, it has like a cache key. So as long as the composer log doesn't change, it will just restore this folder and this will cause the, the composer to not reinstall the dependencies. So let us push that. And let's see our actions now. So this time there was no cache. Here we can see that the cache was saved successfully. And we can just click rerun all jobs and rerun them again. Okay, so here we can see that the cache was restored successfully, which means that our composer didn't have to install all of those. And we can see that it took, you know, uh, much less time, which is exactly what you want. So we are moving in a great direction. There is one more problem. Um, let me go to our tests. And inside of our tests, let's go to feature tests and uh, let's do a you know, a user can visit the home page. So we'll do, you know, user equals user. Fuck, I imported the wrong user. One second, user equals user factory. And let's do this acting as user get uh, factory create. Yeah, let's mark this test. Let's mark this one as test as well. And let's remove the prefix. I prefer it this way. Uh, so yeah, git add, git commit, add a new test. And let's push that. And now let's see what happens. So if you go to our actions and wait for it to execute, okay, we can see that connection was refused to the database. So that's exactly my point. Um, our tests, let us have like, okay, so like there is two things. First of all, lazily refresh database to the base rate. This way we'll always have it. Uh, so this will like run all the migrations, but besides that, the problem is that GitHub doesn't know about our database. So, this kind of sucks. And what can we do about it? Well, a lot, I guess. I mean, we can fix it. Uh, let me just publish our Docker configuration. So let's do PHP Artisan Vendor Publish. And inside of here, let me just find the sale configuration. And now we can see our Docker compose here. And here, here let's let's look for what kind of database are we using. And yeah, we are using MySQL. Okay. So in our tests, we can also create that service. And the way you do it is by adding something called services. Here you would add MySQL. Uh, the image would be. I think it's that, but I may be mistaken. Now here we can add environment variables. So for example, you know, MySQL allow empty passwords equals yes. And MySQL database would be 
PICD testing. So we would need to make sure that our ENV contains that database here. Then we need to define the ports. So it will be, you know, 3306 internally that maps to 3306 externally. And uh, we can add like a health check. Yeah, we can do something like, like this. And if I'm not mistaken, now we can do add MySQL service and do git push. And it will either foil, fail miserably um, or just work. That's pretty much the story of my life. Okay, so I think I did uh, the typical YAML thing where I didn't indent something uh, enough. So let me just add a new space here and recommit that. Okay, and now we can, um, I believe previously we didn't have this initialized container step. We didn't, and now we do have it. So it seems that our MySQL is actually starting and that it did start properly. Okay, that's not too bad. Unknown database testing. Uh, why is it? Where did we get the testing from testing? All right, there is the PHP unit that overrides that. So the way we can solve it is we can do and the testing, and I believe this should override the, uh, the other one, but I'm not sure. All right, so let's see if it helped. Uh, and it didn't. Well, we could do something like this, and this should work for sure. So, like, we could do DB database CICD testing. This kind of stinks, but uh, that should fix that. Hopefully. So, let's push that. And I'm sorry that I'm not the greatest DevOps, <clears throat> but I'm kind of, you know, uh, also doing it more or less live. So, Let's just see uh, where we get with this. And hey, it seems that it worked. So this basically creates our CI. Uh, now in one of the next episodes, we'll talk about CD, which will basically automate the deployment of the code that we just pushed to our production or staging environment. So I hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next one. Bye.